and much does Martin Fistang's show, uh, Urban Transcendence. Uh, one of the last shows, uh, we started this little uh, POE, post-occupancy evaluation uh, series. So we continue this today. And for that, uh, last time we drove up to uh, the Brokeman headquarters, nicknamed the Wood TV, and we drove up north uh, towards uh, the South Sea, approximately uh, two, uh, two hours away. Uh, this time we drove exactly the opposite way, we drove south, uh, this is direction of the Alps. But we also only drove uh, two hours, last time we drove on a beautiful highway, this time we took the famous Autobahn, which in fact me with my little Twingo as my sustainable, because keeping it in the life cycle product, uh, I don't think it's as much fun as people think it is, um, but uh, anyways, <laughs> I mean, that's all that matters. So we're here uh, for, for various reasons. This is also the beginning of a little series within the series of POE. Uh, last time we had the billing typology of, of office, meaning the uh, human event and activity of work. Uh, this time we uh, are introducing another typology that has a lot to do with the idea of the show Urban Transcendence. Uh, Co-founder Ali Amashta uh, got initially excited about uh, the show because she wanted to introduce emerging ideas, uh, emerging tendencies uh, to the islands of Hawaii. So uh, this today is the typology of, of playing, we would say. Uh, in, the, in three shows, we're going to introduce you to three different kindergartens. And so kindergartens in school was uh, my initial access to think to Kauai when I read in the newspaper that uh, the Department of Education was questioned about uh, how to keep or increase the uh, human comfort in schools. And the provocative title in the Star Advertiser was uh, Air Conditioning Schools. When I uh, contacted uh, Howard Wig, which got me in front of a camera with him uh, a couple of uh, months ago, and we talked about that subject matter uh, live in front of a camera. So um, we're going to uh, introduce uh, you guys to three different projects in three different locations with uh, three different approaches. And uh, what they share is a belief in that the truth for a livable future lies within the future generations. Uh, we had introduced to you a couple of emerging architects already, and uh, so this time we will introduce you to the even younger generations of the Keiki. So the little children who will be in charge of our future. So some of us, uh, including uh, Ali, uh, Jay, and me, believe that the future lies within that uh, generation. So um, we're here uh, for another reason that has an analogy or a similarity to our island of Oahu. That is that we're here on a university campus. So as we all know, we got QH, my employer, on Oahu and the other islands. Here uh, we have the University of Göttingen. And this is one of the most traditional universities uh, in Germany. It has been founded uh, many centuries ago and is leading in, in many fields of uh, uh, predominantly the arts uh, and the science, uh, more science and art, actually. So um, I'm sitting here uh, on the campus. You can see in the back of me uh, university architecture. Uh, institutional typologies. You also see me wearing uh, the little winter clothes I had taken with me, sort of prepared for my uh, home uh, country culture climate. So today it needs a shirt, a sweater, and a coat because with the temperatures here 
in uh, moderate uh, climate zones, you never know. Today it's uh, mid June, it's only in the out of this upper 50s, the best. So it could be rather cold, it could be rather warm. We already talked that in a climate like that, which actually is dominating the world because 60% of the climates are equal to this climate, the attempted climates, whereas the other 40% are our uh, climate on the islands of Hawaii, the tropical climates. As we had started to talk about, this leads to a significantly different approach, how to build buildings. Here, the wall architecture, to wall yourself in, to cover yourself, wrap the surface, uh, to stay warm uh, uh, in the winter time. Whereas uh, our point was that uh, why we should go back more to how it used to be to build roof architecture, because all you need is protection from the intensity of the sun and the rain. You can also hear some background noise. There's some uh, gardening, some landscaping uh, maintenance going on here. Because you can see uh, besides of the buildings uh, in the back, which are obviously dated back to the 1970s, where there was a heavy belief in concrete as an innovative material. Other than that, uh, a significant part of the campus is basically kept uh, as landscape. It's actually a demonstrative landscape that um, has a lot of uh, native species, but also introduces a lot of exotic, foreign, so to speak, invasive species uh, for demonstrative purposes. Also, I hope the sound is okay because we get some significant wind, and also I'm always so uh, every once in a while glimpsing up, and checking the weather because uh, there's some rain in the forecast. So I hope uh, we don't get we don't get interrupted because of that. Not because of me. There's nothing that can be damaged. But I got our technology down here, a laptop. So uh, keep the fingers crossed. You see in the background is recent uh, additions to the campus architecture of uh, the University of Göttingen. Very progressive work by architects from Stuttgart. This is called the X Lab. So it's a laboratory building where students basically learn by doing, so hands-on activities. It was built a couple of years ago, right before we got commissioned to design the building we're going to get to. When I'm talking we, it's also important for me whenever I show projects to you uh, to make clear to you that they are a product of Generations or HANA themselves. Uh, our firm Despeng Architect is comprised of Günter Despeng, my dad, and Cynthia Despeng, my sister, and Isabel Schlittmann, and myself. So it's always a collaborative work. So we were commissioned here uh, some years ago. Uh, the three kindergartens we're going to show you are going to demonstrate a sequence of levels of awareness and growing, and uh, but the continued understanding of that good architecture is customized to specific needs. Uh, to keep in mind is the nature of the client. A Kropman and his typology of workspace was customized personally to his needs and wishes. And you guys saw that, how much he identified himself with the architecture, because he was the client, he was the contractor, he's the user. Um, the nature of how kindergartens are run here in Germany is that they're basically run by the government, um, the, the state, and then uh, they, the, the positions for the directors of the, the schools and kindergartens are basically advertised and due to the mechanics in place, uh, hardly ever is the real person who runs the place hired by the time the building is designed. So that leads to a certain disconnect between uh, the design of the building and the user participation and incorporation. So for the time being, there are uh, people who um, uh, represent the real user, uh, represented by the institutions, sort of by the clients here by the university. 
So um, whom we're gonna, we're gonna meet later on is is um, is Miss Lorai. Miss Lorai is the director of the kindergarten. She's gonna show you the building um, from from the inside. She's gonna talk about the building. I'm, I'm hoping that um, she's gonna speak in English to you because this kindergarten is actually for uh, the children of the students of the university and also of the students of the teachers. And the university is obviously uh, multilingual, so here the education in the kindergarten is is also um, at least bilingual. So English has been spoken in this kindergarten as as German is. So um, introducing the the concept of of the building here is that I've introduced you to the context, to the surrounding. You see uh, a multitude of buildings, and they're going to more and more. If you could look uh, towards my right, there's another new building around us. Uh, the background noise now was a bus, so there's pretty intense uh, public and private um, uh, infrastructure. Also, there's some construction sound, which you hear, hear every once in a while from this side. So it's a very dynamic environment that um, gets more and more densified and more and more urbanized. And since uh, the topic of the show is urban transcendence, although it implies it only deals with the urban, as we have said at the very beginning, and from time to time we remind ourselves that actually the city, so the urban, always needs the hinterland, which is another word that a German word that made it to American language, so the countryside, so to speak, because um, although that's debatable, and we hopefully get a couple of shows talking about that, uh, we already have some guests in mind to talk about how self-sufficient the city could be. Uh, there is sort of a theory or a suspicious that uh, the city cannot be self-sustained entirely, so it needs the country to supply. So there's a reciprocity, uh, there is a collaboration, there's a coordination, uh, there's negotiation between the two um, fabrics of the city and the country. And this became a very, very particular, actually the initial design determining factor for this building here, because taking all things in consideration, um, and one of them was to build, once again, like already uh, Kropman headquarters was introduced to you, a zero net building. Zero net uh, means for public clients, that they want to go passive as much as possible. That's a key word, uh, Milan and the campus. So after looking at um, the campus being in this particular part where the site should be, we are, after a long uh, phase of uh, research, our deep feeling and belief was that we shouldn't build here. That, of course, is a crucial conflict because the client wanted a kindergarten and we felt this campus here, that green lung of the campus, that kind of green pathway should be kept. At the same time, um, fauna became involved and there is a, again, Hawaii as we know has the largest diversities of species in the world. So here in this area, it's a prairie dog that is sort of a native species that is endangered. And there are many of other sort of insects here, like bees and wasps and other uh, insects that that is their home here. And so we were respectful of that and we're looking for a solution that could be a compromise that basically uh, could allow human beings and nature to live in harmony with each other. So um, at, at Krokma, we were talking about the fifth facade, and we were introducing the roof to you as, uh, as a facade. At Krokma, having the purpose uh, to basically uh, funnel the cold winter winds um, over the building. And here, again, I'm going to put my collar up because it's really getting pretty chilly here. And that's also a good chance to demonstrate that the direction um, behind me, uh, excuse me, the other direction, <laughs> uh, 
uh, this way is north as well. So we have the same condition that if I would sit here in uh, in December, I probably this wouldn't be enough. I would have I would have to wear even more layers and coats, talking wall architecture. So um, I'm I'm already in the building, or I should say I'm on the building because once again we're on the roof of the building. But this roof looks significantly different than Croatman's roof because this roof is something that I also want to propose and um, encourage to do more of these in Hawaii. This is a green roof, most obviously, as you can see behind. I want to introduce to you the diff two different kind of green roofs. There are extensive green roofs and intensive green roofs. And a while ago I had a little challenge to distinguish the two or to separate the two. So I want to share my little hint with you, which is the intensive. So the word intensive means a lot. So that's what an intensive green roof is. We're going to introduce to you another kindergarten for the uh, city of Hanover that has an extensive green roof, which is basically a very thin layer of green sedum that is just enough to let green things grow, but never big stuff. Whereas this campus here, this here, this is about real green. This is about big green. This is about thinking big as far as uh, the hybridism of architecture and landscape. So we opted uh, for an intensive green roof. Intensive green roof means approximately a foot thick soil that you put on a root resistant uh, roof membrane and in this case here because of the climate another foot of insulation and then on, on a concrete roof. This is a very safe roof uh, and a very effective green roof because as you can see behind me nature has done what we were hoping to take over and occupy occupy this roof. Um, in the very first scene you saw you saw a fence. Um, I'm now past or behind the fence. I hope when certain things uh, that has still have to be negotiated as far as code and user anticipation and participation that the ultimate idea of the screen roof could be activated which is actually to have the children uh, the users of the building use the green roof in a productive way again a very I think timely and important topic on our islands of Hawaii where not only the use of energy talking zero net of this building but also the cost of food is a significant challenge and there are many initiatives that think that Hawaii has been reporting on and continues to feature that there are initiatives to, to grow locally. So um, the, the pedagogy of this part of the building is, is pretty instrumental because it wants to reconnect the keiki, the children, to uh, the cultivation of food. So if they do that around their building, here in fact, sort of in their building slash on their building, uh, the idea is to really uh, help uh, the, the children's understanding of food, the value of food, uh, and with that uh, help uh, with a more nutritious and uh, more, more healthy behavior. So we have now been walking around the building and are on the south side of the building. So up front, it, um, if you want to sort of directly uh, take something from these buildings and build them the way they are in Hawaii, which you shouldn't, because every climate is specific to its place and culture and climate, um, you're going to do things differently. So probably if you still want to do it, you're probably going to turn this building around here that you have this side facing north where you get the daylight efficiency, which is one of the main um, aspects of this facade. And you have the green roof towards uh, the north in Hawaii. Here in tempered, chilly summer Germany, you uh, turn it the other way, the way you see it in the back where the glass that you see now part of the shades down because there was some sun 
uh, not so long ago, but in the winter sun all the shades are up and the deep winter sun can penetrate deeply into the building and passively heat the building. So passive means there's no active technology involved, there's no PV, so photovoltaic or solar involved sort of to indirect heat the building. The building is directly heated by the rays of the sun that pass through the glass, convert that into heat, and that heat gets stored in the thermal mass of the building, which is the very special strategy of this building here, which we will see when we get into the building. So um, you see also the uh, adjacent neighboring building, the x flat building here. And again, from here it's a building, from the north it's a non-building, and it's also a non-building to the west, which is where the building is also burned. So these are the both directions that you want to keep the sun out, and that actually applies to the Y as well. The west sun, as we all know, the hotels that are facing the ocean on Waikiki have a big problem because the sunset view is great, but the sunset sun or the, the pre-sunset sun is pretty brutal and overheats, so you have to bring the shades down. So here we burned that as well, so there's no uh, solar overheating in the summer, whereas towards the east is um, direction right where you're looking is where the two existing buildings are. So we took the synergy of the buildings already being there and have the entrance facade towards that direction and as well the existing buildings and shading uh, the, the entrance. Uh, what's pretty uh, significant about this facade here, this elevation, are these concrete frames. These concrete frames, as many elements in our buildings, are multi-duty uh, and multi-purpose. So these frames, as already indicated, are the uh, scaffolding or uh, basically the armature to hold uh, the shading devices. There are multiple different devices of different kinds, which you can operate individually and separately from each other. So there's a top one that you can bring down when the sun, this is for the highest uh, summer sun, which then shades the glass facade while you can still keep the views. Whereas for the early spring or the late uh, summer sun, you bring in a, an additional piece of shading down because the sun is then already pretty low. So there's a strategy. These frames are pulled higher than the facades and become a balustrade. This balustrade, um, you maybe had taken, seen a glimpse of when we were still on the roof, but probably not because the, the grass is already too high. But when you're on the road, you can see that. So we were talking multi-purposing. We thought this is a campus. You know, you got students from all the wor over the world. They want to hang out. They're going to get together. So at night, when the kindergarten is not occupied, they can actually be on the green roof and use the ledge of the balustrade part as a bar, hang out, have a couple of non-alcoholic drinks, hopefully, chill out, and uh, take their beverage, uh, the empty bottles with them in the morning, then uh, kindergarten can be kindergarten again. And um, also the frames have three feet uh, depth, and the, f the three feet depth uh, is important to, uh, when the, the surface shade is down, create a stack effect to draw out the heat that has sort of um, um, developed behind, behind the screen. Last, not about at all least, and it would be nice if summer would be back in a couple of days it will be. You can see the keiki lounging on these frames at the bottom part, the horizontal uh, sort of plinth part of the frame becomes, becomes a lounge chair or a lounge bench because three feet is the approximate length of, of the children in the building. Uh, with that, I think we're going to stop here and we're going to move on now into the building. So now we're inside, finally. Um, I started for outside on the roof first, which I call the fifth facade. And then I moved on to the southern side and now I'm inside, which is the heart and the core of the building. So, thanks for being our guest today. Uh, my name is Laura.
and you're the director of the seminar in here at the University of Göttingen. So thank you very much for having us. And yeah, if you wouldn't mind if you could explain a little bit about the building, mm -hmm. the institution, mm -hmm. and the pedagogy. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, maybe it's possible to talk in German for me. Okay, English is very good, but I will. Thank you. Words. But it's maybe it's a bit easier for me. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, we have an Einrichtung mit drei Gruppen. This is a Krippe. This is the Altersgruppe 1 to 3. And a Kindergartengruppe in the Alter 2 to 6 years. Mm -hmm. um, we have a video all. We have drei englische Kräfte in der Einrichtung, die den ganzen Tag Englisch sprechen mit den Kindern. Mhm. Ähm, die Kinder sind in Gruppen eingeteilt, ähm, zwei Gruppen für die, die Altersgruppe 1 bis 3 und eine Gruppe eben für die älteren Kinder. Mhm. Ja. Ähm, es gibt einen festen Tagesablauf. Eingebunden wird das Ganze in eine, eine Trägerschaft von Studenten der Göttingen. Mhm. Studenten der im ganzen fünf Einrichtungen mit 250 Kindern und wir haben eben das Glück hier am Nordcampus sein zu können in diesem besonderen mm -hmm. Bauwerk. Yeah. Alright, so um, you explained that the university has six facilities total, I guess, mm -hmm. five. Oh, five, five. Yeah. Six, five facilities total mm -hmm. um, with 250 um, uh, children. Uh, total, yeah. and you are privileged to have the newest facility here on the north campus, mm -hmm. and the building has basically three groups, mm -hmm. and it starts with the toddlers, the, the very little ones, yeah. age one to three, yeah. and you also then have a group with three to six year yeah. young ones, yeah. so to say all the Till they are going to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of preschool. Yeah, and it's it is. Yeah. And it's a, it's a bilingual yeah. uh, education here. And the, the, the children are basically uh, children from students and faculty, yeah. right? Yeah. Both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there is a very international intercultural community yeah. here. Yeah. So the children are being raised in both English and German. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's the yeah. approach. We have 14 nations all together. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. that's great. Yeah, talk a little bit if you like about sort of uh, the, I almost like to call it because we had a nice pre discussion here, mm -hmm. your kind of personal understanding of, of education and the facilitation of education and how the built environment mm -hmm. could support that. that would be great. Yeah. For us, it's very important the nachhaltigkeit um, das Leben den Kindern zu vermitteln. Mm -hmm. Deswegen kommt uns diese ökonomische Bauweise sehr entgegen. Mm -hmm. Wir sparen Energie. Mm -hmm. Das ist also heute sehr wichtig, den Kindern zu vermitteln. Mm -hmm. ähm, genauso was Mülltrennung angeht oder nachhaltigen ähm, Anbau von Lebensmitteln, wie wir mit Lebensmitteln um. Mm -hmm. Durch unsere verschiedenen Nationalitäten hier im Haus ist es ähm, wichtig, dass wir verschiedene Lebensmittel und Lebensformen anbieten mm -hmm. und das spielt immer zusammen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. So you say that um, from your understanding the building should sort of demonstrate and facilitate the principles of sustainability mm -hmm. so that the children grow up to be in balance with the elements. Mm -hmm. so this is why you think the way the building is conceptualized and constructed and made is an important pedagogical contribution mm -hmm. to this um, raising that awareness of the children. It also goes into uh, the, the vegetation, so the landscaping is very important. It's also productive landscaping mm -hmm. and also waste management. Yeah. And that will please my, my co-host here is Anya Mashta back in the blue and that's one of her special fields of interest and expertise is that kind of waste management. So that the children really kind of grow up here mm -hmm. to uh, to become uh, responsible uh, more of citizens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, yeah, maybe I'm going to talk a little bit about the, what's special about the building here. I mean, the audience has already seen it from the outside, but yeah. maybe talk a little bit about the inside, what's yeah. sort of unusual in the building. Yeah, um, it funktioniert ohne Heizung. Das ist ganz besonders gut. Wir haben diese großen Glasfronten, die man jetzt hier auch sehen kann. Und das ist für die Kinder ganz toll, auch für die ganz jungen Kinder. Die können einen richtigen Blick raus haben in die Natur. Es ist alles sehr offen und transparent. Das ist auch der Weg, wie wir arbeiten. Unsere Arbeit ist transparent den Eltern gegenüber. Und eben das Haus bietet diese Transparenz durch viel Glas. Und ähm, die touristische Bauweise entspricht ja, unserer Auffassung von ähm, Ästhetik. Almost too good to be translated, so I'm going to do my best again. <laughs> so you say that the, the building, the way it's made, so the way it's positioned, so it's basically going to be a zero-net building. However, I already explained to the audience that, um, that the public clients are always very heavy on passive system. Whenever it comes to active systems, they're a little bit more hesitant. Mm -hmm. So whenever we see lights on or the dishwasher is operating, this is energy that we still need yeah. to harvest. But the building itself, as uh, primarily its, its heating cost mm -hmm. is basically off the grid because yeah. it does it passively. So all these glass fronts, this is why we have positioned ourselves mm -hmm. here to demonstrate to the audience mm -hmm. that this is where actually the building gets heated mm -hmm. from the sun, basically. But it's also the light that comes from the sun, and that's a very important element for the children mm -hmm. to grow up. And transparency is important, mm -hmm. so that the children basically have an overview and can orientate mm -hmm. themselves efficiently and effectively. Mm -hmm. And so it's very nice to hear as an architect that you say so the, 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 the Puritan way, and I actually call mm -hmm. it the Puritan, mm -hmm. puristic way of building. So uh, what we basically see here is that the walls are basically pre prepped concrete, yeah. but this is basically supporting your pedagogy of um, using essential means, just using the right elements mm -hmm. in the right place, mm -hmm. and more and more less. Yeah as to raise the children's awareness for, for again, becoming this kind of yeah. globally responsible yeah. kind of citizen. That's, that's great to hear. We do a lot of documentation mm -hmm. about our work mm -hmm. with the children. Mm -hmm. And um, the view is better um, for the documentation because we put it on the road for the parents. Um, we have special folders. So everything is very colorful. Mm -hmm. And we like these um, pure Okay. Okay. So that's that's great to hear. We already talked about a principle, um, I guess something that's yet to be optimized because we actually got to know each other now, mm -hmm. which is four years after the mm -hmm. facility has yeah. been uh, opened yeah. and operated, which is partly to my fault because I've been in the U.S. <laughs> for so many years, first in Arizona yeah. and then in now. But actually, the way it should be that we should have met at the beginning of the planning process mm -hmm. so that you as the actual user mm -hmm. actually have the impact already and we walk through the building and we also want to make sure that the audience understands that POE, the post occupancy evaluation, yeah. is not just praising the good things which yeah. I appreciate, but yeah. you all you also very constructively critical about certain things and say, yeah. dear architect, if you would ever do it again, yeah. please consider this or yeah. that. So that's yeah. very important. Yeah. You should probably also share with the audience that you said uh, as far as um, zero net, uh, the, the winter is perfect, it does yeah. a great job, but the summer overheating protection is an ongoing challenge. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I can I share that, yeah. I know that, and this is something that the I guess, international uh, community yeah. of architects and scientists yeah. have to continue yeah. to work on. Uh, and, but it, it's great to see that you're like, although these are challenges, mm -hmm. you're not giving up on yeah. the idea and the yeah. concept of, and you say, let's face it and let's tackle it together. Yeah. We like the idea, mm -hmm. but we need to... Um, yeah, this, the sun heating is, is really hard mm -hmm. yeah, because mm -hmm. of these thick window mm -hmm. um, parts. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a um, thing 
which should um, change. I explained to the audience also that sort of specificity of, of place and culture and climate is very important. So if people hopefully get excited about the building, they shouldn't think that they should do it the same way in Hawaii. Yeah. Whereas in fact in Hawaii, we, I always say we have roof architecture in Hawaii mm -hmm. is the best mm -hmm. because the temperature is so privileged, it's always yeah. the same. Yeah. Whereas here is, is wall architecture. Yeah. Wall architecture presents mm -hmm. some challenges because we know we have summers here, so you got to take off. I always compare the wall to the cold, yeah. so you got to take off the cold yeah. in the summer. Yeah. In the winter, you got to put it on, and often we have the spring and the, the fall mm -hmm. where you better layer. Yeah. So we can address that much easier with clothes, yeah. and so building as a more static part of organism has yes. kind of a challenge to do that. And we should think about the climatic um, change. Yeah, mm -hmm. it will be hotter oh. in the summer, yeah. so we need this protection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we have um, po the possibility to open the roof mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. so this um, works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were talking about is that we also worked on the building. There were certain things that were optimized yeah. and added. Yeah. We also uh, put another partition wall in the yeah. back of the hallway. So yeah. You can talk about the hallway a little bit as, as, as an additional mm -hmm. pedagogical space. Yeah. 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 Kannst du mit dem Stock mal zur Mama gehen? Weil du bist nämlich die ganze Zeit mit auf der Kamera. Und ich weiß nicht, ob die Mama das möchte. Ja? Danke! Ja. <lacht> ja. Um, okay. The way through our house, um, the corridor, is a special part um, from this house. Because we use it like an... Um, separate play room mm -hmm. um, because this is one problem that we have to have enough room for special activi activities mm -hmm. so, um, so we need this um, corridor mm -hmm. for special things mm -hmm. yeah, and we change um, the group rooms a bit mm -hmm. so we put some uh, a wall mm -hmm. to separate the corridor from the other parts mm -hmm. and that works uh, really well that's great so um Laura said that they, uh, the, the, the hallway is actually the only function in the program that is not prescribed. Actually, these, these which I would call living rooms, by yeah. the way, to get yeah. more, yeah. because that's where they live, actually, yeah. most of that time. And they're, yeah. they're absolutely determined to 50 square meters. Yeah. Now remember from the planning phase, it can't be 49, it can't be 51. <laughs> because it's about funding and yeah. so you know it's a big challenge so everything is prescribed and so that actually the architect has very little flexibility to even express herself himself but the hallway is the only because he can't really prescribe because the, yeah. the hallway is sort of specific to the layout of the building yeah. so you can't prescribe it to the middle you know, middle you know, you know. so th this is why we always mm -hmm. say we always fight for it to make it as wide as we can yeah. You nicely acknowledge that that makes sense because then it becomes a street. Mm -hmm. We're actually, besides, the children play in the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like sex in the street yeah, as a country. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. That's like you play on the street, that's yeah. where interaction basically mm -hmm. happens. And if you make it too narrow, it can happen because yeah. then barely can, barely can people pass each other. But if you make it wide enough, the ones who use it for frequency and logistics interact with the ones who use it for. So maybe to the audience a little bit, um, if people probably would be confronted with the thought of having concrete walls in a, in a, in a, in a kindergarten, yeah. it, there's probably a lot of resignation in, in, in theory. So maybe you can talk a little bit about the reality. 
Also vielleicht, wo Sie darüber gesprochen haben, nee, dass Sie einfach sagen, dass Sie einem eigentlich die, die Farblosigkeit und die, 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 die schön gesagt, der Purismus der Wende eigentlich für Sie wertvoll ist und Sie keine Angst vor haben, wie man gemein ist, wenn man der Bevölkerung einen Bürger sagen würde, also eine Betonwand in der Kita, das ist ja auch schon Nein, also wir, wir finden, dass es wirklich gut ist mit diesen ähm, einfachen, mhm. einfachen Elementen, mhm. ähm, weil die Kinder schon so sie bringen a lot of color. Mhm. Und ähm, ja, unsere Kunden sind sehr ähm, bildungsnah mhm. orientiert mhm. durch die Universität mhm. und sie können das. Ähm, das Gute aus der Sache erkennen. Okay. Ja, das entspricht unseren Prioritäten, unseren Kunden. So you say that, actually talk about your your occupants and your clients, which is yeah. an interesting idea because it's it's about serving yeah. the, the university. So your your clients are basically already into their higher education background, yeah. so they're more prepared for for basically that approach yeah. of saying less is more, yeah. which, which comes from yeah. uh, the from the row, by the way, who yeah. was, was an advocate for that. And yeah. saying, you know, if you have, he, he went so far that he, by the way, said, you know, a, 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 an empty space is almost like religion, where you start to think about your existence, whereas the cluttered space takes you away, distracts you from, from the essential things in mind. Unsere Kunden, unsere Kinder können den Raum selbst fühlen, so vorgeblieben. Okay, yeah. So it's exactly that, that if it's, if it's neutral, Uh, the children that bring in the colors themselves, not only what they wear, as I understand, but also what they create. Yeah. So their creations, for their creations, which are mostly color, yeah. by nature, the, the, I think the, the gray wall is a better contrast. Yeah. It actually supports yeah. and lets almost like pop out yeah. the creation more, as yeah. opposed to when the architect already tries to be the creator, yeah. then the architect sort of competes with the child so that's, that's, that's great to hear. We do a lot of artwork. Mm -hmm. um, we have discussion with the youth, with the children, mm -hmm. um, like um, about some art, um, arts from uh, Hamburg, maybe, mm -hmm. or clay. Oh, great. So wow. we visit a lot of, um, we go on excursions. Mm -hmm. Ja, viele Ausstellungen, uh -huh. Museen uh -huh. und die Kinder haben eine Idee von Kunst uh -huh. und können unterscheiden, differenzieren. Uh -huh. ja. uh -huh. Miro ist immer auch ein, ein guter, guter Künstler für Kinder uh -huh. und äh, in Kombination mit unserem Haus uh -huh. ist das eine, eine schöne Verbindung. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wir haben auch Bilderausstellungen uh -huh. und das wird sehr gut. Okay. That's that's great to hear. I never. This is really great for me too because I never, I was never able to think it to that extent. Because that's you who brings the life into the building. And also, my idea was to create a framework, so yeah. the infrastructure yeah. that seemed to have worked. Which is great. So you say that you start very early with art education, yeah. and you confront the children with the artists and you know, the masters of uh, yeah. art, Van Gogh and Van yeah. who is yeah. a great role model that yeah. the children can connect to very well yeah. and I find this really interesting because not only do you teach them about well you teach them about science and art so the building is about science and arts because that was uh, when we had the first open house here uh, right around when it was open we had many people here and they were looking at the walls And some people had reservations saying, well, why should my child be in a bunker? Yeah. And I basically said, well, for two reasons. I said, for the first reason, this is the science reason, please yeah. close your eye. And they basically, I wanted them to touch the wall with closed eyes. Yeah. And it was summer. Yeah. And at that time, yeah. it was so cold. And I said, this is, it helps you. The wall helps you physically. Yeah for your well-being, and I said, and then I, I took a piece of something and, and, and showed the contrast on the wall, so that's it's excellent to hear that that works. So it's a real comprehensive education about the science of the arts, 
and I think you know I started the show today and saying that's where the children are called Keiki, by the way, yeah. in the wild, wonderful world. Yeah. So that's where the future lies yeah. in, the, in the in the emerging generation. Yeah. And and many I think um, you know, research shows that cultures or countries that we look up to, for example, to my understanding, the northern countries, that's part of their secret, so to speak. Yeah why they are so successful as cultures in, in many ways yeah. because they upfront that into the education yeah. and stimulate. Yeah. Daycare is a really, really big part of um, children's life mm -hmm. because they are here sometimes over nine hours per day. Mm -hmm. So this is important for them yeah. to yeah. have a, a few around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. special things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I'm, I'm glad we transitioned into English because yours is excellent. It's already easy to translate. It's on the camera, so <laughs> 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 I'm not free. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, I would say thanks for, for your time You're and, and sharing everything. And, and let's stay in touch and, and continue yeah. this and, yeah. and all learn from it. Yeah. Uh, and what I would like to say is what's important for good pedagogical work is to have time, educators, and space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the important, most important thing for us. That's, that's excellent to share with, with us as yeah. architects and as yeah. cultures. And, uh, and again, I think this will be very beneficial for our fellows in Hawaii who uh, you had you brought up an interesting part that you say you have a large uh, Asian yeah. clientele, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. That's also an interesting yeah. analogy, and we we found that actually Asian culture is also our there's a, there's a there's obviously there's, there's not only Buddhism but there's minimalism in architecture actually uh, traces back to Asian cultures. The architect for Dalwando, one of the masters actually of, of pure. Uh, Puritan concrete architecture. Yeah. So maybe that also helps that this mm -hmm. uh, our cultural yeah. uh, and the Asian influence. We talked about the, the sleeping rooms. Yeah. Maybe if you want to maybe address that. Yeah. A few words. Yeah, we have um, 15 little small beds in one room, mm -hmm. and um, it looks like. Um, it's a German fairy tale like Schneewittchen, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, yeah, the room is a bit too small for mm -hmm. these um, beds, and um, it's uh, better to have no bed, only the mattress mm -hmm. on the floor, mm -hmm. so you can use the room for anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another great uh, consideration that she says the sleeping rooms which were again very rigorously prescribed square footage wise and she says they're actually too small for that specifically when you put in the bed which is bulky and eats up the space and then it's basically occupied by the physicality of the bed the whole time so you should just basically take out the bed bring in the mattress which again uh, Asian culture is very used to the tatami mat roll it out yeah. when you sleep, mm -hmm. roll it back together and store it and yeah. you have an extra room. Yeah, and the children love to, to um, cuddle each other and to be um, very, yeah, yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we have a lot of brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in our home. Yeah. And they're also special. Yeah. Um, the older ones are in um, the green group. It's called green group. Mm -hmm. um, we have three names. Mm -hmm. Yellow, blue, and green group. Blue and yellow are the three groups. And, um, from that, they mix, and then there will be the green, green ones. So, and when they can see each other, it's like family. This is really good. Yeah. And, and the three colors are complementary to this color. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. the basic. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll talk about this concept. Yeah, again, we will. I think it's great to communicate that to, to other colleagues, both on the client side, both on the architect side, the pedagogue side.
And so with all this experience together, I think uh, many more of these facilities could thrive and could have a very important key impact on us as societies again in the case of this for the future. Thank you very much for your time and for your